Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, I am going to solve the linear programming problem using R language. And in R, we have multiple packages available that can solve the linear programming problem. So if you go to this particular website, you can find out the list of those packages that can solve linear programming, integer programming, non-linear and other optimization problems. So right now the package I am going to use is that is lying under the mathematical programming solver, which is basically LP solve. So now we will use this LP solve package in order to solve the linear programming problem. So if we come to our studio, okay, so first of all, in order to solve this linear programming problem, we are going to install the package or we can do that so under over here we have a package we should click on install and then write down lp solve okay so this is lp solve and once i have click on install it will start installing this particular package make sure your computer is connected with the internet so once this package is installed as i have already installed this particular package Okay, then we need to call this one. So how we can call that is library and we solve run this one. Okay, we call this particular package. Now, uh, in order to using this particular package, what kind of linear programming we are going to solve that is this one. Okay, so we want to maximize our objective function. So this is my objective function. These are the two constraints. So how we can write down in the R. So right now, I am writing down uh, the variable that is f dot obj, which is the name of the variable in which I am storing my objective function. Okay, and this is basically the assignment operator, which is less than minus or either you can use simple equal, so both are fine. So whatever the assignment operator you want to use. Okay, so right now I am using as less than minus sign. And then c is basically, this is a concatenate function, it will generate a vector okay mean it will create a vector so where one is representing the coefficient of the x1 nine is representing coefficient of x2 one is representing coefficient of x3 so here how we have defined the objective function in r so the next thing is we need to define the constraints so the first of all we are going to define the coefficient of these variables Okay, so how we can do that? We can do that with this using the function of matrix in R. So that is one, two, three, three, two, and two. So how we can do that? So again, I'm writing down F dot C one and that is representing the constraint. So that means all the constraints of the model is uh, we are saving in this particular variable. And then again, assignment operator, and then we are using the function of R matrix. So C concatenate is one, two, three. Okay, so that is basically representing the first constraints coefficient. Similarly, next we are writing down three, two, two. That is representing the third, uh, con second constraints uh, coefficient. So we know that we have three decision variables right now. And then we are writing down number of rows. So number of rows mean how many constraints we have. So we have two constraints, right? And then by row is equal to true means that that means consider uh, these values as a row. So that means one, two, three. So this is the first row and this is the second row. Consider this as a row perspective. Okay. So right now we have set down the coefficients of the uh, model. The next thing is we need to indicate that uh, what kind of directions we have means is the particular constraint is less than or equal to or exactly equal to or greater than or equal to okay so both the constraints are right now in this particular model are less than or equal to so that's why we are writing down with the concatenate function less than or equal to comma again less than or equal to in double quotes and then we are storing the right hand side that is 9 and 15 okay so this is the right hand side so this is how we can set the linear programming model in r okay so once we have set down this linear programming model in r now how we can solve that one so in order to get the solution of the objective function of x1 x2 x3 so we call the function of from the lp solve package that is lp then we are indicating what kind of problem it is it is whether you want to maximize the objective function or minimize so right now our problem was maximizing case so that's why we will write down in double quote max. If it was minimization, we should write down min. 
M I N, comma. Then in the variable we have stored the objective function. In the variable we have stored the constraints. In the variable we have stored the directions. In a variable which we have stored the right hand side. Then we are saying closing this particular function dollar sign. That means we are accessing from the LP solve solution. So once we run this one, so we will get the answer of x1, x2, x3. Okay. So right now it is indicating that uh, we should uh, the value of the x2 is 4.5. The rest f x1 as well x3 is equal to zero. Similarly, if we want to find out the answer of the objective function, then we should write down LP solve. Then all these are the same. Then compute dot sense is equal to true. So if I run this one, so we will get the answer of the objective function, which is forty point five zero. Okay. So the next thing is, if I want to perform the sensitivity analysis, okay. So if for a linear programming, once we have optimally solved the problem, so we are morely interested in the sensitivity analysis. So right now I am skipping this notation. So first of all, in order to perform the sensitivity analysis with respect to the objective function coefficient, what we will do? So this is the same which we have used to solve the problem. Then we are writing down dollar sense dot coefficient from. So this will be indicating the lower limit of the objective function coefficients. So as you know that we have three uh, coefficients, mean three decision variables. Okay, so this is basically indicating the lower limit for the first variable's coefficient. This is basically the lower limit for the second variable's coefficient. Similarly, this is the third variable. And as you can see that right now we are getting the answer in a scientific notation. If you want to remove the scientific notation, or you can do that. So there is a function called R in options. Then psi pen is equal to triple nine. So if you run this. Uh, command and then again right now run this particular command as you can see that instead of scientific notation we are getting in the terms of whole numbers answer so this is a lower uh, value of uh, you can see the first coefficient you can easily can see that this is minus infinity and then for the second variable coefficient this is two this is the uh, third variable's coefficient lower limit and then in order to find out the upper limit that is equal to this one so we can see that um, that for the first uh, variables coefficient that is c1 okay so if the value right now it is one if the value is lying within this particular range which is from minus infinity to 4.5 if the coefficient is lying within this particular range then we will say our optimum solution which is this one will not change Okay, so if your coefficient is lying within this range, but if your coefficient one is that is against the first decision variable x one, if it is uh, occurring outside this particular range from minus infinity to four point five, then we need to recalculate this uh, linear programming model. Similarly, we have for the second decision variable range, okay, that is from two to positive infinity. Then we have minus infinity to thirteen point five. Okay, so these are basically the uh, sensitivity analysis with respect to the objective function coefficient. And next, we are interested in to find out the values of the dual variables. Okay, so these uh, for how we can do that? That is again the same function over here. If we write down dollar duals, it will give us the the first two values are basically representing because as you know that. We have the two constraints, and in when we convert this linear programming problem into the dual, so the first constraint will be represented with respect to the first dual variable. The second constraint will be represented with the second dual variable y two. So right now, the answer of y one is four point zero, as well as the answer of the second variable is zero point zero, and these are the constraints, uh, basically dual constraints answer. So right now, uh, in which we are interested, right, we are interested in order to find out the shadow prices, or you can say dual prices of these variables. So how we can do that? We can write down dual start from. So this is basically lower limit. These are the upper limits with respect to the uh, dual um, boundaries, or you can say the sensitivity analysis of this one.
uh, with respect to the right hand side okay now we are coming towards if we are interested to find out instead of exactly the linear programming we are interested to find out the integer solution okay instead of uh, finding the fractional values that is the linear programming answer we are getting we want to find out the integer solution so how we can do that so this will be the same now we need to add this particular parameter which is int dot vc and then one colon three because we have the three decimal variables so that's why we are writing down one colon three that means from one two three so that means all the variables answer must be integer so if we run over here as you can see that this is the answer of the objective function and this is the answer of the decimal variable whereas when we solve the linear programming problem so the answer of the objective function was 40.5 as well as the answer of the integer is that is 37 okay and similarly the answer of uh, the decimal variable is 140 whereas this is the answer in the linear programming problem okay so remember that if you are solving the maximization problem so the answer of the integer programming problem is always less than from the linear programming problem so that means you can say that integer programming problem is always providing us the lower bound if the function is the maximization case of the linear programming problem similarly if your problem was the minimization case then the integer programming problem is always provide you the upper bound of the linear programming problem. So thank you so much. See you in the next video.